Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus 23. Thou shalt not. Uh oh. There's more than ten thou shalt not. When we look at the law. Thou shalt not. Raise a false report. That's almost like when he said over here, he says, Thou shalt not bear false witness. I shall not bear a false report. Lying, liars, tales, stories. Put not thy hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. So in other words, when you are called upon for whatever testimony, whatever evidence, whatever needs to be said, you better be honest. If you're not, you're walking with the wicked. And that wicked, the wicked, when you mark that in your Bible, that wicked points to the Antichrist. Not just wicked people, but the Antichrist. He's going to lie. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. The multitude, the, the masses, the people, don't do right. The few... Many will go the broad way, but few will go the straight gate. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. And rest is to twist violence. When you do judgment, it is supposed to be holy and it's supposed to be right. We'll see a couple more in here. Neither shalt thou, neither shalt thou countenance, that's the facial expression, a poor man in his cause. So in judgment, here comes a poor man. Raggedy clothes, smells, missing teeth. You're not to look upon that man and say, oh. Nope. Because you would be biased and you would be prejudiced. And the law would not be right. If you were looking at him, oh, just because he's down on his out, we ought to do something for him. And that's the American government. Oh, because they come from this place. No. Blind judgment. If, okay, we're done with the judgments for, for now. If thou meet thy enemy's ox, or is, no seven. If thou meet thy enemy's ox or his ass going astray, going out of the way, he's not where he's supposed to be going, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. You're wherever you are. Here's his ox. Here's his animal. He's not where he's supposed to be. He's not in the field where he's supposed to be. You're supposed to take that animal back to him, even though he's your enemy. If thou see the ass of him that hated thee, lying on his burden, in other words, he's got the burden on top of the ass, and wouldest forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help with him. Give him aid, whatever he needs. Help him. Just trying to read my notes here. You're not going to help him, but go help him. The one that hates thee. 
Thou shalt not rest the judgment of thy poor in his cause. Just because he's poor, that is not you to say, give him rights. Because the poor are guilty too. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He may be dressing up. There are people on the streets today, more today, you know, they go out there with a sign, and if you were to follow them, some of them go into Mercedes Benzes. I'm not saying all of them, but some of them do. Keep thee far from a false matter. No lies. Do not tell lies. And the innocent and righteous slay thou not. What do you do with the Inquisition period in history? When one church called the Holy Mother Church killed and slayed Bible-believing Christians, I would say safely thousands, maybe millions. What would you do with a man named Adolf Hitler? I guarantee millions. People who had done no wrong. No injustice. And I bet in American prisons today, and I know for a fact for, for street preachers and all that, they have been locked up for the Word of God. They have lost jobs for the Word of God. For I will not justify the wicked. There's that wicked again. Mark that in your Bible. The wicked, the Antichrist, is going to put innocent people to death in jail. But if you do it in the law, when you get in that land, you put somebody under death or under prison, and they're innocent, you just want to get rid of them, the Bible says you're wicked. So what do you do with the Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes when they took Jesus and nailed them to that cross and Herod said, uh, Pilate said three times, I find no fault in him. Herod said, I find no fault in him. J Judas said, innocent blood. What do you do with that with those people? You call them the wicked. And thou shalt take no gift, bribe, for the gift findeth the wise. And perverteth the words of the righteous. And that happens in the courtrooms across this nation. They are bribed by people with influential power and money and corporation. God will judge them. See, Solomon said in Ecclesiastes, is, you know what? I'm not going to quote the verse completely, but... He says, people, are going to, people will get away with wickedness because they can get away with wickedness. Up to you stand at the judgment seat of Christ, if you're saved, or the great white throne judgment if you're lost. Then guess what? You're going to be judged. So no bribing. Also thou shalt not oppress a stranger. For ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Notice how God keeps throwing that one in there every once in a while. Remember who you were. For the Jew is get back to that doorpost in Goshen. When I called you out and saved you and redeemed you. For the Christian is get you back wherever your Calvary was. And remember who you were. That will keep you humble. And you might find yourself. You are maybe in the same condition. That you were before you were saved. And need to get right. Okay. And six years. Thou shalt sow thy land. Thy land. To that the United Nations. And shall gather in the fruits thereof. Okay. Six years you do that land. You sow it. You weep it. You sow it, you reap it, you sow it, you reap it, harvest, boom, six years. And the seventh year, all right, here's the Sabbath year. We got a Sabbath week, six days work, seventh day, take a break. 
We got six years to work the land and the seventh year rest. And this is one of the things that God says, I am sending you to Babylon. I am going to damage and do harm to Jerusalem because you have not done this. And I believe the amount of time that they are in Babylon is based upon this eighth day that they can go back and work. Under the seventh day of rest. The seventh year thou shalt let it rest, the land, and lie still. Then the poor of thy people may eat. And what they leave, the beasts of the field may eat. So you let your crops grow. And you don't pick them. And those who are poor and those who can't make means are able to go in there and pull through. The beasts are able to go in there and eat. It's not stealing in the seventh year. That's definitely not happening in America. It's amazing in America. You can donate things, clothes, food. You can donate that stuff to organizations and then they'll turn around and charge you. And there's no charge in here. Go in and eat. In like manner thou shalt deal with thy vineyard. Same thing with the vineyard. And with thy olive yard. The seventh year, leave them alone. Let them have rest. Six days thou shalt do thy work. Okay, we're going to weekly Sabbath. And on the seventh day thou shalt rest. That thy ox and thy ass may rest. The animals, the son of thy handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. Give them a day off, America. Rest. I'm not talking about, when I say America, I'm not talking about the Sabbath day. Just take a rest. Relax. And, uh, and all these things have I said, God. Unto you be circumspect that is cautious, looking around, being aware, and make no mention of the name of other gods. Don't even mention them by name. Neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. Don't even say their names. But we'll know by Jeremiah they will not only say, but they will worship them gods. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. That's the Passover. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days. As I commanded thee. In the time appointed of the month Abed. That's the first month. From the 14th to 21st. For in that thou camest out from Egypt. And none shall appear before me empty. You better bring an offering. You better bring something. And a feast of harvest. That's the Pentecost. Christ died on the cross the Passover. Acts chapter 2 is the Pentecost. 50 days. I wouldn't say 50. We pent to 5. And the feast of harvest. The first fruits of thy labors. So when they meet in that upper room, they are the first fruits of the beginning of the church. Which thou hast sown in the field, the world. The field is the world. And the feast of ingathering, that is the feast of tabernacles, September. Which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered all thy labors out of the field. That be the rapture of the church. If you want to put that to the church spiritualized. So the church will begin at Pentecost and it ends at the Feast of Tabernacles. Three times in a year all thy males shall appear before the Lord God. Passover, Pentecost, Feast of Tabernacles. You leave what you're doing and you go to Jerusalem. Well, they don't know where it is now, but we do know where it is. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread. So it's not just any bread. It's got to be unleavened bread. 
Neither shall the fat of my sacrifice remain unto the morning. No leftovers. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God. So every year, those first fruits, they're God's. Thou shalt not seed or boil a kid in his mother's milk. This is proper. Behold, I send an angel, capital A, before thee, to keep thee in the way. Make sure you go where you're supposed to be going. And to bring thee into the place which I have prepared the land of Israel. Beware of him. And obey his voice. Provoke him not. For he will not pardon your transgressions. Well, that's interesting. For my name is in him. Now that angel is Jesus Christ. At this point right now. He cannot forgive their transgression. Because he has not died on the cross. But. If thou shalt indeed obey his voice. And do all that I speak. Wait a minute. This, this angel is the voice. And what God says. Then I will be an enemy unto thy enemies. And an adversary unto thy adversaries. In other words. Anybody that curses you. Boy I'm going to curse them. And I'm going to wipe them out. For my angel. Capital A. Will go before thee. And bring thee in unto the Amorites. And the Hittites. And the Parasites, and the Canaanite, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. We'll see those names over and over from now on. And I will cut them off. Eventually within time he will. But not in Joshua's time and not in the book of Judges because they gave in to the gods which we're going to read now. And God left these people to try the, the people of Israel. Then thou shalt not bow down to their gods. They will. Nor serve them. The gods. This is where the danger is. You allow any religion to come in and practice in your country. But Jesus Christ. Nor do after their works. Their sacrifices. Their holy days. Their abominations. But thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. Number 3352. As a, as a reference there. You go in there, they got gods, they got a church, they're not worshiping God. Get in there and tear it down, but you can't do that in America. So don't tell me let's have a revival. Don't tell me God bless America then. And you'll have a hard time because a lot of these religions are in the Baptist churches. And they're not going to tear them down. They'll make an excuse. I think we were one time in a church. And it was Christmas time. They had one of those stupid trees up. And we went right past Jeremiah about the tree. It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, what happened? You just removed that passage. Because there was a tree. And we can't preach about the tree like the Catholics because if we preach about what the Bible says, then you're going to say, hey, there's something wrong here. And the Lord knows the pastor doesn't want 2,000 people coming to his office and call him on the phone and email him. Well, you said that the tree was wrong. Why do we have it? You're not supposed to be doing any of this stuff with the heathen. That's why with my ministry, I try to go out there and show you what the, the sources and the foundations of all this stuff we're doing. And it's wrong. Ye shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread. Food. And thy water. Drink. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Healing. Under the blessings of God to the nation of Israel. That's a sign. Now do you realize what condition was Israel... When Jesus showed up in his ministry. He had to feed them. He had to give them water. 
and he's taking care of all kinds of sicknesses. So, according to this, you serve the Lord your God, ye shall be blessed with the bread and thy water, and will take away sickness from the midst of thee. Were they doing right by God when Jesus showed up? Absolutely not. Thou shalt, there shalt nothing cast their young, nor be barren. Your animals and your women are going to be fruitful and multiply. Anybody want to explain Elizabeth? Wasn't she old when she bared? Barren? Bible records, I don't think it ever says anything about uh, uh, Anna having a children. She was a widow and stayed at the temple. But, let's move on. In thy land, United Nations, the number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee, and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. Jericho. We have heard the terror of your God, and we are afraid. We are locking the gates. We're not even going to do battle with you. We're going to hope that you just keep on moving on. That's Rahab's testimony. And I will make all thy enemies turn their backs unto thee. Alright, so let's look at this one now. I will send my fear before thee, and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come, and will make all thy enemies turn their backs unto thee, and when Jesus came, who was the authority of the land? Rome. Not Israel. Were they living right? And we really haven't got to the guts of the law yet. I will send hornets before thee. Now that must have been a, I believe that's little hornets. Imagine a guy in one of these, these outfits of steel or Whatever it is, this armor. Can you imagine a few hornets getting in there through the armholes and just doing their job? You ain't going to pick up your sword. You're going to be trying to get out of that uniform as quick as you can. Imagine trying to fight and here comes some hornets biting you all over the place. We know as much and God's in it. How big is a hornet? Not very big. And by the way, I will send the hornets. Animals listen to God more than man does, and yet animals cannot be saved. Now, by saying that statement, I made people angry. Oh, God will tell a hornet, after that man, baby, go get him. And that hornet will head right to that man that God said to go. That ass that spoke to Balaam said exactly what God told him to say, and yet Balaam could not tell what God told the people to tell the people. Jesus got on that, that ass, the colt of the ass. Let's go. All right, no problem, sir. Let's go. Probably saying, I've got Jesus on my back. No problems. He is God. Probably went back to the, to the farm the other day. You guys didn't carry Jesus like I did. Animals listen to God. Elijah, he's out. It, it, the land is barren. He's only got this river, and the ravens bring him food. Animals listen to God before thee, which shall drive out the Hebite, the Canaanite, the Hedite, from before the hornets are going to drive them out. I will not drive thee out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate, and the beasts of the field multiply again. They're not going to disappear just like that. If I do, the animals are going to come in. And they're going to take over. And there are lions and bears in Israel. David said he took on each of them at one time. There's lions that slew prophets. So let the people stay. I'll get rid of them slowly by slowly. And they'll keep those ravenous animals away. And the animals overcome. I understand that a fox can destroy a vineyard just by running through it. I, something like that the Bible records so God knows how to do things in its own time God is patient and long suffering man is not 
Little by little I will drive them out before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. And I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea even into the sea of the Philistines and from the desert unto the river Jordan. And I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand that fail in Joshua's time. And thou shalt drive them out before thee. Thou shalt make no covenant with them. They do. That one tribe that, that Joshua makes. They painted themselves up, act put on a Hollywood acting profile, dressed up. We just saw that about them. They made themselves poor and hungry. And Joshua fell for it. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, and Joshua does, nor with their gods. And they will. They shall not dwell in thy land. They do. Least they make, least they make thee sin against me. Religions will make you sin. For if thou serve their gods, it will surely be a snare or trap unto thee. Oh, read Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Verse 